ô Dieu, ouvre nos cœurs par la puissance de ton Esprit Saint, dans les Écritures de ta parole vivante. Nous entendons ta voix aujourd'hui. O oh God, open our hearts with the light of your Holy Spirit. In word and scripture, may we hear your word for us this day, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once upon a time, when a minister retired, presbyteries and conferences held big retirement banquets. A whole evening was taken up at the annual meetings, and it was dedicated to having those retirees to speak about their careers and their life's work. Young in ministry, I would sit through six or seven of those long speeches. They would talk about starting ministry in prairie fields or preaching in the outports of Newfoundland. We were regaled with tales of the glory days, their worries about all these newfangled ideas of pastoral and family relationships that were all perfect, filtered through the lens of their memories. I remember thinking, am I going to be up there someday? Luckily, traditions have changed a lot, and I don't need to bore anyone with a speech about my 35 years in ministry. Today, instead of looking back, this week I'm focusing on figuring out what it is to go forward. What is our mission? And that is the fourth transition task in this sermon series. We've already reflected on heritage, leadership, connections, and today the question at the root of the transition journey is this. What is God calling Rideau Park United Church to be. Now, some might say it a different way, what is God calling Rideau Park United to do? But I think this is the more crucial issue. What is God calling Rideau Park United Church to be? Now, the word mission itself is controversial. Our global partners and indigenous ministries have asked us to stop using that word in our partnership agreements. For them, it smacks of colonialism, the suppression of indigenous culture, the idea that there is only one right way to do things, our way. It's a message we've heard in the United Church and we've taken to heart. However, interim ministry still calls this transition task mission. It's drawing on the word, uh, root of the Latin word missio, meaning one who is sent out. So the mission of the church, therefore, is not just what happens in these walls, not just the work of the staff or the committees or the projects we do. Our mission, for lack of a better word, is how each individual, how each one of you is shaped and influenced by what we do here. And then how do we equip our members to take the hope and the ethic and the vision of this community out into the world when we leave this place? For that to be fulfilled, we need a pretty clear idea of what it is we are all about. We may be diverse, but at the same time, we are rooted in some common ground around this question. What is God calling Rideau Park, not the people, the people I mean, not the building, to be in this time and place? Sometime in this last year, I bought a book. It was a sort of ministry thing, I confess, I haven't even finished it yet. And because it is so specific to ministry, you're unlikely to find it in your average local bookstore. I went to Amazon and I ordered it. But what I didn't realize was that I had ordered a used book, a sale that was negotiated by Amazon but originated with a third party, a used book supplier in the U.S., So I opened the parcel when it arrived, and I found a book in very good condition, but it had some of those little sticky notes. So you're saving certain pages. I've never seen that in a book before, a new book before. Then the real treasure appeared. Someone's handwritten notes were still in the pages. It was 
kind of plan or to-do list. And even though I have no idea who owns this book before me, I can tell that it was a minister like me leading a congregation through some kind of big transition. So at the top, it says, really important meeting, late September or early October. Then, apparently, a two-day retreat, I assume, for the congregation. Then a more detailed plan. Starts out with the words, review Hammett. Now, the only Hammetts I know are Dashiell, who wrote detective novels, and Kirk, who played for Metallica. I don't know. Apparently, it's also an equation in organic chemistry, so I don't know what that has to do with leading a church. Then we get to the meat, though, with phrases like, discuss our learnings, who we are, community, timeline, identity. And then the retreat outline. The first day, they're going to create a communication plan and write a mission statement, all in one day, which is pretty good. And then the next day, they're going to decide on their future vision. Then there were some random words. I'm not sure it's part of the retreat or the minister was just filling out his week. Objectives, goals, recommendations, Sunday school sermons, and, of course, meetings. Honestly, this to-do list could be found on any minister's desk in any church. Last week, I was asked to attend the Pastor Relations Commission to talk about interim ministry training. And I told them, all ministers need this kind of transition training. The church needs people with these skills. Because right now, all of our congregations are in transition. It may not always be because ministers are moving away, or churches are closing, or congregations might be in conflict. But these days, transition is always on the agenda. So we need a better understanding of what it is God has called us to be so we can start making those goals and objectives clear for the future. This is essentially a spiritual question. It's one that needs to be fleshed out before you start looking at the budget or the nominations report or the statistics about how many people you've buried versus how many people you've baptized. We need to ask ourselves, why are we here? What is God calling Rideau Park to be right now? Here at Rideau Park, we replaced the old mission statement, which had stood for many years, with a vision statement. But vision statements and uh, mission statements are not one and the same, at least not in church language. A congregation might rewrite their mission statement every few years, but a vision statement is something that is much more deeply rooted. It's not permanent, but it usually has a pretty long lifespan. So a mission statement is a statement of identity and purpose. It's brief, concise, memorable. It expresses one's core values with actions. Meanwhile, a vision statement is an affirmation of what the faith community might look like if we were able to actually live out the mission statement. A vision statement talks about what could be different. It may be brief or concise, but it should always be memorable the way a favorite song or a favorite painting is memorable. A vision statement provides the destination. If it has any integrity at all, then that destination will shape the direction we go to get there and the relationships we need along the way. When I hear the words of the prophet Micah, which are 2,500 years old or more, what I hear is a vision statement for the people of God. The people of God probably thought they had the perfect mission statement already. Regular animal sacrifices, generous amounts of precious oil, dedicating my eldest to the temple. If I do this, God is really, really going to like me, right? And the prophet Micah said, no. Don't you remember what God said is good? Probably a thousand times already in Scripture. 
And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? That there is the vision statement. The people of God figuring out what the vision is so that they might actually look and start thinking about what it would mean to live with God's priorities guiding them. When I'm preaching on Micah 6, I always like to point out that it says, do justice and love kindness, not the other way around. Because we find it easier to do kind or nice things than to accept it from others. And we also find it easier to love justice being done more than we like actually getting involved and making it happen. What does Rito Park envision when it sees itself doing justice, loving kindness, walking humbly with our God? Think about some of the things that make Rito Park unique. Say our children's ministry, our community partnerships, the variety of music we have in worship. You might wonder why God has re- equipped Rideau Park with those particular gifts, those opportunities to serve the world around us. And then to ask ourselves, are we using those gifts or those opportunities to our best ability? There are lots of things we might take for granted about church life, whether it be Sunday morning worship or hymn singing, or Sunday school. But it's the things that make us unique from other congregations that help us to understand maybe where God is calling Rideau Park to. It helps us to appreciate the challenges and the goals that are uniquely part of Rideau Park's DNA as a faith community. When you leave either the building or the webcast, What is it that you're taking with you? What are you taking home for yourself? And what are you taking from this gathering that you think you might share with others? What are you taking out into the world in order to make the real world we live in a place where Micah's hopes of justice and kindness and walking together are going to be valued? No, we are not missionaries in the classic sense of that word. Not in the sense that we think we have the answer everyone needs. But we are missio. We are sent out. And we leave this place with a holy word and an idea and about the power we have to make the world a more affirming place. We are sent out to turn that corner into the future, and to carry the mission and the faith of this place wherever we go. Thanks be to God.